Hello and welcome to News Today on Joy News. This bulletin is available on your Joy News channel here on Multi TV. It's also available on your DSTV channel 421. Coming up, imminent shutdown of domestic airline operations if government fails to release lands belonging to the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. We'll tell you more about that threat issued by workers of the authority. Also ahead, a member of the NPP's communications team, Richard Asante Yeboa, files contempt charges against the Krabbe's Muntie FM over threats made on the lives of judges in the country. Details of these stories, including business, sports, entertainment, as well as international updates, all coming up in the next hour here on News Today. Stay with us. My name is Kwabina Chencha Henibwati. Many thanks for joining us here on News Today. Now, the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority is threatening to suspend operations at the domestic airlines terminal if their lands encroached upon are not released to them. Workers of the authority today began the partial withdrawal of services as part of a roadmap to press home their demands. Spokesman for the workers, William Omaku, tells Joy News the decision has been necessitated by their desire to protect the country from possible plane crashes. William Omaku says workers of the GCAA will continually withdraw their services until their demands are met. Uh, most of the action is, uh, to, um, is internal. We want to put some little pressure on our management. We know they are doing well. They've written a couple of letters but we want to still push them to, to do what they have to do. That is one. Then uh, if uh, by Friday nothing has been done, we, don't, we still don't have access to the land, we're going to ground uh, local flights. It means there wouldn't be any flight uh, within, uh, I mean, no movement within Ghana. Accra Kumasi, Accra Tamale, Accra Takrade, there wouldn't be any movement. We're going to ground those movements. And how long do you intend on carrying out such an action? as long as possible until we get access to the land. We don't want to wait until the equipment becomes totally down. You know, like uh, the Director General said, GCA is always proactive. We've bought an equipment lying down over 640, I mean 600,000 uh, euros, and uh, we can't install it. Why did we buy the equipment? So we need to install it, and we, we do, taking this action for those who can let us have access to the land, I mean, to do what, what they have to do. It's our understanding that the land is not residential. It's actually designated for the airport, for civil uh, authority. So why hasn't it not been released to you? Yeah, exactly so. You no, know, the land has been uh, the executive instrument that was, um, I mean, that gave the land to civil aviation. It's, it's clear. We heard people are saying we don't have title to the land. Well, that is true, but the government took the land for civil aviation. We have the executive instrument. I have a paper in my hand that states clearly the purpose. They took the land for the Department of Civil Aviation as a remote station. So the land belongs to us. How come uh, the land has been taken? Well, to be sincere with you, we don't know. Because uh, it's been there for quite a long time. We're using it as a, rem a remote uh, a receiving station for some time. We decommission our equipment for a period and we are moving back to the land and it's not available. And you know, even aside that, every well, you go to any country, civil aviation or for that matter, the airport has, I mean, reserve land for future development. So that land is not like um, we, are, we are not using it. It's there. We are using it now. I mean, we are supposed to use it now and for future development. Did they give you any timelines at all? For now, we don't have any timelines. That's why we are embarking on this action. Okay. And after Friday, when you enforce the seizure of all local flights, what about international flights? Will, will your action then escalate? Or? Uh, exactly so. We're hoping that um, we won't get there. 
that um, will get response. Even we are hoping that it will not get to Friday where we have to hold flights. But if nothing is done, we'll get there. And if after some period we, have, we will meet and assess the situation, and we can go international. This equipment, if it's not installed within the period stipulated, what happens next to the airport? Well, I think there is a misconception that has been created that our airspace is not safe. It's far from that. I mean, everything is okay for now. We, I mean, Ghana's airspace is one of the safest. All the airlines will testify to that. All we do is we are being proactive. We don't wait until equipment are grounded. So when the equipment starts, we normally we even have a period, um, the, uh, the period that the equipment is supposed to go. Once that period reaches, we make plans. And once the equipment starts giving problems, you, you try to, to I mean, uh, address the issue. So that's why, based on this, that's why we bought the equipment. And we thought we were going to install it. Unfortunately, we met this problem. So if it's not installed, what is going to happen is uh, the HF may not be working as expected. And for that matter, we may not be effectively provide the services that are needed. And see, one other thing is, um, I think they've talked about getting other land for us. Well, if um, we're able to get other lands, fine. But the issue is, these equipment were not purchased. I mean, you don't buy them off the shelf. They are manufactured for you. They take so many things into consideration, calibration and the rest. You know, they go to the sites and the distances, and based on this, they manufacture the equipment. So it's site-specific, site-specific. So getting another land for us may not serve the purpose. That is why we are pressing very much that this land must be released. Chairman of Parliament's Roads and Transport Committee, Theophilus Tetechai, is however confident the demands of the workers will be met. Speaking on news desk earlier today, Mr. Tetechai said his committee will be liaising with management of the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority to ensure normalcy returns. The workers maybe have a genuine concern that they are raising and management needs to work together with the workers to ensure that this issue is resolved. But uh, I just want to appeal to the workers, yes, they have their genuine concerns that they are raising but then we shouldn't allow that to disrupt uh, 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 the security and safety of passengers. It's Workers may raise concerns, but you expect the thing to be done maybe within the shortest possible time, okay? But maybe the, the, there are processes that you need to follow, and maybe the processes that they need to follow is what the workers feel is delaying, and therefore they need to take that action. But um, once they themselves have started talking with management, there is a need for them to calm down. Okay. Let's give management some time to assure the entire nation that yes, these lands will be acquired for the purpose that it is intended for. And then I believe that at the end of the day, all of us will be happy. Okay. So my appeal to the workers is that they should remain calm. Uh, the threats that they've issued now, they should hold on. Let's wait up to the end of the day, the decisions that will be reached, and then we we'll move forward. Once it is something that is dear to the heart of the entire nation, because these are issues of national security and safety issues, and it is the responsibility of government to ensure that what needs to be done is done. I believe that at the end of the day, some uh, 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 decisions will be reached which will be satisfactory to all the various stakeholders. I'm very, very sure there will be a consensus. It remains a possibility yeah. that there may not be a consensus. Because they, they, need, they need a facility. Indeed. They need to install the equipment. True. And these are things that are needed in the aviation sector. They cannot do without it. So definitely, a way has to be found out for them to be able to uh, do the necessary things that they need to do to ensure passenger safety and the security of the entire okay. nation. Well, well, Away from that now, in the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference has condemned an attack on the country's judges by two panelists during the radio discussion describing them as an attack on the freedom and security of Ghana. According to the group, the state security apparatus should investigate the comments and the proper sanctions meted out. 
Meanwhile, a private citizen, Richard Asante Yeboa, has sued Munti FM for contempt over some death threats issued to judges of the Supreme Court. Richard Asante Yeboa dragged Accra Bay's radio station before the Supreme Court for threatening the judges handling the voters register case. Well, Richard Asante Yeboa joins us on phone now with some more on this. So, Richard, can you tell us really uh, what instigated this decision of yours? Well, brother, I think uh, what really uh, motivated me to embark on this journey stems from the fact that the constitution enjoins every citizen of the republic to have protect and also oppose the lands of the land indeed you realize that uh, when you're looking at the, the, the arms of government you are possibly looking at the, the executive you're looking at the judiciary and parliament so it means that the judiciary is a very fundamental aspect of our government system without them in terms of rule of law in terms of um, ensuring that a sanity in our system, it wouldn't be there. So it becomes extremely problematic when you hear individuals who go to sit on radio and who goes and sit on television sort of condemning people and also criticizing and speaking to the extent that they are ready and they are, they are ready to sort of harm these people to the extent of threatening them with death and all that, alluding to the fact that they know these individuals, they judge their houses, their house numbers and their, 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 their movement and everything is really quite frustrating. Indeed, why we would have sort of taken this one with a pinch of salt? But the reason why it cannot be done so is that in the audio and also on the uh, radio discussion, you could hear audibly from one of the panelists giving reason to the fact that for him, he is not even scared of being jailed as a result of this sort of pronouncement that he was making. The fact that he was threatening the lives of this court, the fact that he was undermining the, 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 the authority of the Supreme Court, the fact that he was fighting against the sentence of the, the court, the highest court of the land. So you realize that these people are, uh, there is kind of uh, pronouncement, if let go, it will not really help and our system. Beyond that, you also cited an example of what really happened to some uh, judges in about 30, over 30 years ago, when you, uh, in 1982, June 30th, uh, more than three uh, court judges, uh, high court judges, and other uh, military officers were uh, taken away from their homes and, and, and killed under mysterious circumstances. So, in such scenarios, and when you are being given this kind of picture, then you are told that you ought to sort of make sure that you take up a pragmatic step and make sure that you mitigate some of these things. So, this is what encouraged me, and I then spoke to my lawyer, uh, lawyer Gary Marco, to sort of pursue this court, a case in my behalf. That okay. is why we are busy fighting this court All right. case. So uh, I'm trying to understand something now. So you have sued the platform on which those comments were made. How about the individuals who made such comments? I, I sued the, 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 the host of the program, who is a, a one Salifu Maske, uh, alias Mogabi, okay. and uh, uh, Gordon, and also one, uh, one uh, Alistair. These are the individuals that the content cases have been brought okay. against. Now, so I expect that it's difficult to uh, speak to these issues. Okay, the information available to us earlier suggested that, well, the Supreme Court was probably going to take a look at uh, this uh, rate of yours, this contempt charge you filed today. Uh, has it already happened? So we are still in court. We are hoping to okay. see it around maybe 1 o'clock. We might possibly get something about it. Right. And also get to the date. Yeah, I mean, we are hoping to hear from the Supreme Court today. So okay. we are all at the Supreme Court at the moment right. and working around the court to see how the court will speak to these issues. Okay. Mr. Asante Yeboa, many thanks for your time on news today, this afternoon. And Richard Asante Yeboa is a, a citizen and also a member of the NPP's communications team. While well, he has filed contempt charges against the Kabe's Munti FM for allowing their platform to be used to threaten judges in the country. Well, earlier, the Judicial Council described our transits by two radio commentators as a, a development with the potential to undermine the independence of the judiciary and the rule of law. Now, the two, Alistair Nelson and Godwin Akogan, are reported to have threatened to visit ju justices of the Supreme Court with violence during a radio discussion on June 29. A statement issued earlier on Monday by the council also called on members of the judiciary to remain calm and unruffled in the discharge of their judicial responsibilities. Now, the Association of Magistrates and Judges of Ghana has also condemned utterances made by the two. Addressing a news conference on Monday, Appeals Court Judge said Justice Dennis Aj said such utterances were in bad faith meant to undermine the administration of justice in Ghana. The Association of Magistrates and Judges of Ghana, AMJG, has listened to the utterances of two radio communicators 
on an Accra Munche 100.1 FM station where they threatened to eliminate judges. This was on the eve of Matters Day. These utterances undermine rule of law and the independence of the judiciary. As contained in the 1992 Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, the utterances tend to put fear in the judges and magistrates of Ghana who are vested with judicial power under the Constitution. The members of the Association of Magistrates and Judges of Ghana condemn these uncalled for utterances made in bad faith to undermine the administration of justice in our dear country, Ghana. The judiciary, as an arm of government, is crucial in this our democratic dispensation. It must therefore be strengthened and generously guarded by all and sundry. We assure all our members to continue to dispense justice according to law. As the executive of the association is working in conjunction with the Judicial Council and the Government of Ghana to ensure the safety of all members. We hereby advise and appeal to all electronic and print media to be circumspect in their utterances and in what they print to avoid undermining the independence and integrity of the judiciary. Let's just stay with the issues at the courts and former National Youth Organizer of the People's National Convention, Abu Ramadan, says his legal team has discovered some 84 districts which did not record a single National Health Insurance Scheme registrants, a situation he describes as problematic and constitutes some of the reservations captured in their petition before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is today expected to resume sitting on the case, but even before any pronouncements are made by the country's apex court, the former PNC youth organizer is challenging the credibility of the list submitted by the Electoral Commission after scrutinizing it. Abramadan says he is hopeful the Supreme Court will adjourn today's sitting following the evidence of discrepancy made available by his lawyers. Are they going to audit? Are they going to audit the hard copy, the 14 million applications that are before the commission? Because even even in the names they submitted, when you look at what we filed in court, we raised issues with almost about 84, 87 districts that were missing. Meaning to say that in 84 districts, nobody used health insurance to register, which is problematic. So on what basis would the audit be done? Because if we are going to audit the database, the database hasn't got that kind of information. If we are going to audit the, the hard copy, 84 districts will be omitted from it. Because based on the electoral commission's assertion, 84 districts, nobody used health insurance to register. We're hoping that our our documents we filed, our application we filed, uh, would be heard. The court would give us opportunity to to speak to it and uh, raise the issues for the court to to consider in uh, giving a ruling on the on the application we earlier on filed. The, the application we filed, whether really the court would would adjourn and, and give the ruling, but if they so decide to do so, we would abide and, and be happy to hear what the court has to say. Let's now speak to joining reporter Raymond Akwa, who's currently at the Supreme Court monitoring proceedings. Uh, Raymond, uh, good afternoon. Many thanks for joining us. Can you tell us what has transpired so far? Okay, right. So Raymond Akwa's line has dropped there. We'll try and reestablish contact with him and bring you more on that uh, unfolding issue. But you're watching News Today here on the Join News Channel on Multi TV. We're taking a break. We'll be back shortly with some more stories. Stay tuned. Many thanks for staying with us here on News Today. Let's now turn our attention to some issues of security and police in Wa have picked up four individuals for robbery. The four suspects were picked up as they attempted to steal motorbikes in the Wa municipality. The four persons who are aged between 19 and 36 were arrested during a special operation conducted by the Upper West Police Command. Rafiq Salam has more in the following report. <laughs> Following the surge in burglary and motor theft cases in the one municipality of the Upper West region, the Upper West Police Command has increased patrols to ensure that the culprits are apprehended and made to face the full rigors of the law. Three suspects were arrested in the process. 
there are 20 year old coffee mosses, 19 year old Boeing Sixtus, and 25 year old drinking spot owner, Akosi Jan, who according to police source, is the mastermind of the group. Deputy Apoes Police Commander, Dr. Saibu Garaba briefed the media about their arrest. These suspects were actually noted for motorbike snatching at gun and knife points and at the same time breaking. So on Saturday, 2nd of July 2016, our criminal investigation department, the regional CID, supported by our men and then our informants, were able to arrest Kofi Moses. And when the arrest was made, uh, the others, other two were also arrested. Arrested. And a search among these people came out of the SB that we've seen, the motorbikes that we are seeing, then also uh, most of the equipment that we've seen. And the link here is that the same group that undertake motorbike snatching at gunpoint are the same group of people undertaking breakings in one municipality. Why am I saying this? A search in the houses of these boys revealed items that were stolen from a break-in business center in Wat Town. And those were the things you've seen like uh, the, the desktop computers, the uh, cameras, and the scanners. This group, the same group that actually robbed uh, motorbikes that you have seen are the same group that also did the break-ins in one municipality. The fourth person arrested, but who was not part of the trio, was 36-year-old alien man Adam Amidu. He was released from the Suyani prisons a month ago after serving six years for sale of narcotics. He was arrested by the police patrol team in Wa, along with the local manufactured pistol and a blackface max. The police will do everything that we can to ensure that the racketeers or the syndicate that is actually terrorizing the people in terms of uh, motorbike snatching at gunpoint or knife point and at the same time breaking in by chiseling people's main doors are uh, actually uh, this uh, 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 breakdown. What we want to do is that we will definitely ensure that these people are arrested and then they are prosecuted in our law court so that the laws of the state will prevail. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. And here in Accra, my name is Kwabna Chen Chehini Boatin. This is News Today. Let's now talk about power and the worsening erratic power supply in the last one month has gone to a head as the public outreach continues across the country. More than 240 megawatts of power has been shed daily, with many Ghanaians complaining about the impact on them. Officials have indicated lack of fuel has been the main reason for the shortfall in power supply. Now, some of the frustrated Ghanaians have been speaking to join News on how the lack of power is affecting their lives and businesses. Even yesterday when I got home, uh, I was told uh, since morning we were having a light off. So it just came around 6. Yeah, so the, the power outage, yes. Although it's not all that like uh, the initial stage, but maybe you go off about uh, 12 hours. Some, it goes off within an hour, it's back. So you don't know, we can't classify it as uh, whether it is doomed so or no, uh, not doomed so. But actually, we are experiencing that uh, light out. For the power outbreak, this morning when I was leaving home, it was even off whilst I was coming. And then uh, yesterday night too, when I got home, where the lights were on and then all of a sudden it went off. So we even thought it's there, prepaid, which has got finished. But we saw that it was a light out. And we don't know. We don't know. The government says they are solving it. They brought this um, huge, um, how do you call it? The thermal, uh, the thermal to do this thing, to solve it. But it's still ongoing, it's still ongoing. We don't know why, we don't know what they are doing about it. But we pray that they solve it, they solve it, so that we all be in ease. We even think that while the soldiers are there, we are on the same lines with them. So there being a military area, we are going to experience some, I mean, good electricity, this thing. But even them in the, this thing, the barracks, they also experience the same thing. We also explain the same thing over there. So I don't know, then being government institution, we thought that it could also affect us. We also, also have a good yeah, benefit from it, but it's like, oh, nowadays it's, 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 it's getting worse. 
Oh, it's very bad, if I may say. Very bad, because day in and day out, a lot have been going on. Even the whole of yesterday, I had light, uh, light out the whole day. It was even that it came. It's wet in the morning, it came later in the evening. It, it looks very stressful, because sometimes you may be alone in the house, and there's no power supply for you to entertain yourself with your telly or your uh, gadgets in the house. So sometimes it feels very boring. It happens most often, that I can't tell, but let's, let's say out of a week, it, it happens about four times out of a week. So bad. I can't bear, in fact, we don't like it at all. It just comes and goes sometimes. It comes, goes on, on and off like that. And, uh, what comes and goes? The doomsaw. Yeah, the light just comes in and goes out like that. And uh, it's, a very, it's a very bad thing. It it's destroys our appliances in the house too. It's more complicated to keep food, to like do normal practice in the hospital. But we will live with that. Yeah, I live at Adenda, house and down. That was last week. From Wednesday, we had a light out. And because of that, I have to wake up dawn to iron everything before I'll come to work. Minor works around that it, barbering shop and other things. Because of that, when you go there, they will tell that they will tell that they don't, they don't have light and as well as they don't have generator. So when you go, they have to take some. That's why I I, I did my shape without cutting down the hair because of the doing so. So I think it has affected it is affecting some people over there. Well, those were the views of a cross-section of Ghanaians on the power situation in the country. We're still staying on power and the Electricity Company of Ghana has announced the new subsidies introduced by government for the next six months. This is to provide a relief from the high electricity tariffs suffered by Ghanaians in the past four months. But just how will power consumers be able to see these subsidies manifest on their bills and the credit purchase for their prepaid meters. Head of tariffs at the ECG, Ebenezer Baden, has been speaking to my colleague Beatrice Edu and giving us the breakdown a number to or an average number to it what we say is that if you are zero units there is a gain for you if you are 50 units there is a gain if you are 100 units there is a gain so that's why we have we are guiding customers with a reckoner now the reckoner will come to explain for example will calculate each unit of consumption what it was before and then what it is now so would you say that the non-residential areas would be, as in for the industries, would have more subsidies to enjoy as compared to the residents? No. What it is is that it was a portion pro, pro rata to these customers. So industry has its share, residential customers also have their share. Remember in terms of population, residential customers are more. So that's, that's how it's prorated. Now, the statement that was read to us, which came from government, said that it, this decision was arrived at after extensive, extensive consultations with all the stakeholders. And I want to find out from you, how sustainable is this? Okay, so um, the word extensive in there meant that they have also determined how it will be paid for. And that brings in the sustainability part. If you give a subsidy and you don't know how it will be paid for, that's the question. But really, if the subsidy comes and then there is a clear mechanism to pay for it, then really sustainability requirements are met. Are you not worried that over the years people have complained about how subsidies don't help the tariffs and the fact that consumers end up paying the same thing or the, the real tariffs at the end of the day? Okay, so um, you see, sometimes subsidies come through pressure groups and all that. Perhaps once these decisions are being made, the mechanism hasn't been put together to identify what the, uh, how it will be paid for. It will have to go through budgetary mechanisms and all that. But once you identify, for example, I can give a very uh, easy example. If, for example, the gas price of today is to be reduced, it means generation costs have gone down and it's a way where subsidies can be can be obtained from so there are so many ways of, of doing this and then the consultation had to brainstorm and then come up with a mechanism for this to be to be addressed what would you say to those who would say that government owes you a lot of money and instead of giving subsidies to consumers why won't government pay your debt so that ecg will be efficient for everybody Okay, so this uh, subsidy or relief we are talking about, 
the mechanism doesn't come on the government space. And as the head of tariffs at the Electricity Company of Ghana, Ebenezer Baden, in an interview there with Joy News' is Beatrice Edu. You're still watching News Today here on your Joy News channel on Multi TV. We're taking another break. When we come back, we'll bring you updates in business and sports. Stay on. And now time for some business and low numbers in terms of job creation in the three regions of the north raise concern about labor migrations, especially to the greater Accra region. Analysis by the statistical service has shown the three regions of the north as well as the Volta region are the weakest in terms of job creation. This according to the service only calls for more effort at enhancing the job creation capacities of these regions to help prevent labor migration especially to the greater Accra region. That call has been going through some of the figures in the Statistical Services Job Creation Report and has actually come through with this report. The greater Accra region recorded the highest number of both skilled and unskilled jobs created, while the northern regions as well as the Volta region performed poorly. The highest number of jobs recorded in the agricultural sector were created in the Shanti region followed by Volta and greater Accra regions. The industrial sector recorded a total of 3,240 new and skilled jobs, while the Upper West and Northern regions witnessed the highest number of job losses in the sector. The least number of skilled jobs created in the industrial sector were created in the Upper West region, while the Greater Accra region added 422 new and skilled jobs in the industrial sector. The report says the level of informal jobs in the services sector is very high, accounting for about four-fifths of the total number of jobs created. Agriculture, on the other hand, created more formal jobs than informal jobs. The Greater Accra region recorded the highest number of new jobs in the informal sector, both in industry and services. And the Chamber of Pharmacy is assuring there could be a downward review of the prices of medicines in the country if the National Health Insurance Authority pays claims promptly. The Chamber says the current nine-month period the NHIA has adopted in paying the service providers is pushing many of them out of business. Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber, Anthony Ameka, tells Joy Business, high tariffs, taxes and cost of distribution are having a toll on the finances of members. He wants the NHIA to review the payment plan for cost of medicines to go down. Here is the situation where you supply the medicines to the various NHI service providers and it takes nine or eight months for NHI to pay the suppliers, uh, the NHI uh, service providers, before they also pay you the, the wholesaler or the importer or the distributor. To avoid being blacklisted, by the importer, and by the manufacturer or the supplier, you also have to go in for loans. And the loan you go in for, some are at 5% uh, uh, per month, which means you are looking at almost 60% per annum. Right. And then you also are looking for the forex, the forex, the, the changes in the forex. So what you normally do is you have to hedge your forex you also have to hedge the interest, and these are all costs to the, the patient or the client at the end of the day. But we are of the view that if NHI is able to pay the service providers on time, let's say now that there's an outstanding, long outstanding uh, debt, if they could pay at least five months immediately, it could also cut down this cost and most of our members will also be prepared to come down with the prices of medicine. Apart from even hedging the forex and then hedging the interest, you also pay various taxes at the port, which we think that if the government is able to remove the tax, the tax, those taxes or levies, it will also help to bring the cost of medicines down drastically. Again, the certain taxes like uh, EDIF fund, um, the warehousing of your product, the transportation of your product, and then the other administrative costs, all sum up to almost 96%. Uh, that is also added 
196 percent that is added to the product which we think that is at the higher side and we are not doing the patient any good so the government should look at it and take off at least the fat the 17.5 percent on medicines so that will be it for business. My name is John Kojo and welcome. But for more business stories, you can I mean join me between 1 and 1.30 on the marketplace. Today we are looking at the passing of the deposit protection bill in Parliament yesterday. We'll be looking at that in detail on the marketplace. Coming up next is your sport. <music> And that's a wrap up on news today this afternoon on your join news channel here on multi tv my name is kwabna change anybody remember there's more news when you visit www.myjoinline.com john kujo marko is standing by with the marketplace many thanks for your company